In this first video covering the balance sheet, we will explore the components and rules related to one of the three major financial statements, the balance sheet. In this first slide, I have a textbook version of a balance sheet. We'll start here in our exploration, and then we will look at a public company's balance sheet that was filed with the SEC. I recommend pausing the video for a few minutes to look over this balance sheet. Specifically, I want you to take some notes on what you notice about the balance sheet. It might be something we already covered or something we've not even talked about yet. So go ahead and pause now. Welcome back. Let's go over a few things you should have noticed. First, the balance sheet must balance. That's rule number one. It's where we started in the accounting module. Assets must equal liabilities plus shareholders equity. Let's look at our sample balance sheet again to make sure that is true. Here, I highlighted the assets and then the liabilities plus stockholders equity. Here, we can see the assets equal the balance in the total of liabilities and stockholders equity. So rule number one of the balance sheet must balance is true here. You've already seen videos that cover assets and liabilities. We haven't covered stockholders equity yet or what we previously called shareholders equity. We will have a whole section on shareholders equity in a couple of videos, but first I want to go through more details of the balance sheet. Let's look at a couple more rules. We already learned that current and long-term assets and liabilities have to be listed separately. We also learned that current assets have to be listed in the order of liquidity. Just make sure you note those things again here. Let's check back in with the sample balance sheet to make sure these two items are true. We can see here that current assets are separate from our long-term assets. And current assets are listed in order of liquidity, so we meet both of those rules. Current liabilities are listed here first, and then we have the long-term liability. So we're meeting the rule on both assets and liabilities. So far, so good on the rules. Before we go back to the rules, I want to point out one thing you have seen before, but it is labeled differently on this balance sheet. This balance sheet has a line item called accrued expenses. Accrued expenses are liabilities, even though they have the word expense in their name. It's really important to remember that. Accrued expense is just another term for a payable. Examples of accrued expenses are salaries payable, utilities payable, and accounts like that. For these items, we record an expense and a liability at the same time. That's where the name accrued expense comes from. We record the liability when we have not paid for the incurred expense yet. For example, let's say our workers worked this month, so we incurred an expense but we won't pay them until the first of next month. In this month, we would need to record a payable that we would call accrued expense and an expense at the same time. The accrued expense or payable would show up here on the balance sheet. The associated expense would show up on the income statement. I know that's a little bit confusing, so you might want to just rewatch this section again to make sure you're starting to understand that, and we'll talk about it again when we get to the income statement. Let's go back to the rules and add a couple more to the list. We have not talked about this fourth rule yet. This fourth rule states that the balance sheet is cumulative. This means the balances recorded on the balance sheet are a running total back since the inception of the company. That means Coca-Cola's plant property and equipment balance is a cumulative total of all equipment the company purchased and sold since they were established in 1892. They likely don't have any fixed assets on their balance sheet that are that old, except maybe land, because all of our other assets have been depreciated or sold over time. I just use this example to drive home the cumulative nature of the balance sheet. Finally, our last rule states the balance sheet shows the company's financial position at a point in time. So it is as of a certain date, usually the quarter end or the year end. You might look at a monthly balance sheet. But either way, it is not showing us the change in the balance over a period of time. It is showing us the ending balance at a point in time. 
So here on the balance sheet, this is the ending balance at the end of the most current year, and this is the ending balance in the previous year. So we could calculate the change between these two balances, but here it's just showing us this point in time. What were the balances at the end of this year? In the next video, I want to show you a public company's balance sheet, which they have filed with the Securities and Exchange Commission, the SEC. It is very similar to the sample we are looking at here, but there will be a few items specific to each company on their balance sheet.